life is interdependent. Individual human lives are enriched and sustained by the variety of life around us. An impoverished environment affects us all. Guardian Life invites you to meet and respect some of our neighbors on this planet and join with us in a dedication to life. All life. When we think of wildlife, we tend to immediately focus on mammals or birds and often ignore the lizards. Few of us appreciate the variety of lizards to be found in Trinidad and Tobago. Indeed, we are home to 22 species. These range from tiny geckos like this street lizard, just four centimeters long, to the iguana up to 40 times its length. The geckos are often found around the house. Some, like the mabuya, are dull brown to almost white. They have modified scales on the soles of their feet, which allow them to grip onto glass. Others, like the variegated gecko or the beautiful oscillated gecko from Tobago, are more gaily colored and live out of doors. The geckos share the distinction of being the only lizards with a voice, and in rural areas, you often hear them at night. Lizards found climbing trees are usually of the family Iguanidae. These include not only the iguana, but the 24 hours, the old man lizard, and three species of garden lizards. The 24 hours can often be seen just below a flower, waiting for some butterfly or fly to come to feed on the nectar. Most of the ground-dwelling lizards are of the family Teidae. This family includes the familiar Zanduli and the mat, which is found throughout Trinidad and Tobago, equally at home in swamp and forest. One member of this species has a very interesting reproductive system. Only females are to be found, and they are able to give birth without mating. The list is completed by the skink. A skink is a very shiny ground-dwelling lizard, which has the distinction of being viviparous, giving birth to live young rather via the conventional laying of eggs. We also have two species of legless lizard, otherwise called two-headed snake or bachak snake. These are in fact neither lizards nor snakes, but related to both. The smaller of the two of these black and white forms is often mistaken by inhabitants of urban areas for the poisonous coral snake when, after heavy rain, they are forced out of their burrows. They are in fact quite harmless. While lizards in Trinidad and Tobago are generally ignored, the iguana and the mat are hunted for food. Two other lizards play a role in our folklore. The ghostly wood slave, which provides a useful service by eating insects attracted to house lights, is feared by some. And the 24 hours, a close relative of the iguana, is the focus of more irrational terror. Our fear of this lizard may be inherited from Africa, where its cousin, the chameleon, is considered in some areas to be evil. The lizards are a valued part of our natural heritage. In fact, some species can become quite tame if left, and will even make good pets to the more adventurous. We live in a country that is rich in wildlife, but many of us do not appreciate just how rich we are. On a hike through any natural area in Trinidad and Tobago, one may pass by a large number of fascinating creatures without even realizing that they're there. This is because some are indistinguishable from their backgrounds and others simply do not look like animals at first glance. Such camouflage is very important to animals playing a role in the life of both predators and their prey. Some prey species rely on camouflage to avoid detection from predators. This catadid, for example, would soon become a meal for a bird if detected. 
birds themselves often depend on camouflage, especially when nesting, as they will become easy targets if noticed. The porake is especially vulnerable as it nests on the ground in savannas. It has such faith in its disguise that it will allow you to approach within five feet before accepting that it has been seen. Predators, too, rely on camouflage so that they can creep up unseen by their prey. The Matamata turtle does not even try to approach its prey. It lies still on the bottom of a pond or stream, blending into the background of logs and rotting leaves. As unsuspecting fish swim by, they are snapped up in the waiting jaws. Camouflage is not restricted to colors and patterns. It can also involve movement. Snakes often move very slowly so as not to draw attention to themselves. The side-to-side -side motion of this horsewhip snake looks like the end of a vine swaying in the breeze. The Pycnopalpa, a type of bush cricket, is a master of camouflage. Not only does it look like a leaf, complete with veins and fungus attacks, but it moves with meticulous precision, avoiding sudden or jerky action. Some camouflaged animals may be perfectly visible, yet still not apparent. There is clearly nothing on this branch but large, uninviting thorns hardly worth eating. But wait, this thorn has legs and eyes. They all do. Yes, these are not prickles, but a group of thorn bugs. A single bug could not have pulled off this deception, but the group can easily manage it. So on your next hike through the forest, take the time to look carefully around you. You'll need some practice, but eventually you'll learn to penetrate their camouflage and enter the world of these fascinating creatures that manage to survive in spite of the dangers surrounding them by pretending to be something other than themselves.